I'd clap you on the shoulder if I weren't behind a wall of bulletproof glass. I don't know how you did it, but Hiram Blythe just sent me everything I needed. According to Hiram's message, Minister Clark has ordered a suspicious amount of dimethyl sulfoxide. It's almost as if he's hoarding the colony's remaining supply. Typical elitist, hoarding supplies during a time of scarcity. Once I have those chemicals, we can revive the Hope's colonists and put some decent people in charge. So, good news. You're going to Byzantium and stealing those chemicals. Exciting. Aloysius Clark, Minister of Earth. Virtually every colony requires the presence of a Minister of Earth. Clark is complicit in every one of the board's crimes. Whenever the board issues some new decree, you'll find Clark's signature on the dotted line. Ah, yes, the details. I'm not about to ask you to rampage through Byzantium trading bullets with the board's agents. We'll have to resort to subterfuge. Carmen Imagawa. She's my contact in Byzantium. Meet her at the docks. She'll have all the necessary intelligence you require. I'm giving you my old nav key to Byzantium. You'll need it to land in the Golden City. Remember, you're looking for dimethyl sulfoxide. Big green bubbling vessel with a warning label. I'll take as much as you can find. You can trust her if that's what you're asking. Imagawa is the finest special agent in Byzantium that money can buy. My money, anyway. Of course, of course. What's on your mind? Absolutely. Let's... No, and I've been trying very hard to avoid making eye contact. So you're the captain's mysterious associate. I'm Ellie. Nice to meet you. Wait, not another word. I don't want to know your name. I don't want to know who you are. Let's just enjoy our plausible deniability while it lasts, shall we? Why don't you just invite the entire colony to my secret, carefully concealed laboratory? It isn't as if I wanted privacy. Oh, fine. As long as you're vouching for their character, and they aren't touching things. For what it's worth, I am pleased that you found a crew, such as they are. You're a talented scientist, after all. Our kind has always been incredibly popular. That's odd. I'm at least 65% certain my tone was sufficiently sincere. Perhaps the glass is distorting my voice. Must look into that. What's on your mind? Oh, goodness, no. I wouldn't survive ten seconds in the blackness of the Aether. Well, no, I imagine I'd last at least twelve seconds before I'd lose consciousness and die of hypoxia. Life outside work? No! Of course not. My life is my work. For that matter, everyone else's lives are also my work. An entire colony's worth of lives are at stake. It's up to me, uh, up to us, to set things right. To answer your question, I'd rather stay right here in my lab. There's too much work to be done. The Hope's colonists won't revive themselves, you know. Because we've lost our way, the board has a stranglehold over this colony, and we've all been conditioned into total obedience. The Hope is full of specialists, scientists, engineers, talented individuals like you, people who haven't been corrupted by the board. Unfortunately, the Hope's colonists have been frozen for decades, well past your shelf life, so to speak. No offense.
Precisely. The chemical I need is dimethyl sulfoxide. A rare, potent, essential to reviving long-frozen bodies. Ten years. That's how long the average human can remain in hibernation. You were frozen for decades. In theory, you never should have survived the revival process. But the conventional theories are wrong. You're living proof that it can be done. There's yet hope for the hope. Get it? We'll do our very best to save them all. I'd best get back to work. Oh, I can feel my last dose of caffeinoid fading. Can we talk? Since we're in Byzantium, there's something I've been meaning to do. I haven't actually talked to my folks in a while. Shocking, right? Anyway, it's probably about time I paid them a visit. Given the dangerous life I lead, they've got to be worried sick. Which brings us to where we are today, several messages and a few years late. See, I'm originally from Byzantium, born and raised. I know that probably comes as a big surprise. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was thinking you'd come too. Great! And when we get there, draw out your rough edges a bit. If you've got an outfit you haven't washed in a while, maybe one with some blood stains, wear that one. Oh, and help yourself to the good snacks and put your feet on the coffee table. Mother hates that. Just know that I've got plenty more suggestions if you need them. Anything else? I sure hope you negotiated for a raise with this Phineas guy. Ever notice how this job gets bigger and more dangerous every time he calls in? He's asking a lot, Captain. Makes me wonder what your angle is. a doctor like him once. He had a patient complaining of ankle pain, so he amputated the man's foot. It wasn't even the right one. Point is, good intentions don't count for shit, and nothing's more dangerous than a crusader with a cause. Besides, none of this is your mess, so why go dirtying your hands with it? Guess I hadn't looked at it that way. Still, Phineas isn't your only option. The board's put a bounty on his head, and they've got more than enough bits to pay it. I've got no love for the corporations, but they know how to take care of their people. The ones at the top, anyway. Don't think of it as being a lackey. Think of it as doing a job and getting paid really, really well. I know you want to save the day, but don't forget to look after yourself. No one else out here is going to. Don't mention it, just speaking from experience. Anything else? It's like one of those stuffy art gallery pieces. Looks okay from far off, but once you get close, you realize it's just some mismatched shit everyone's agreed to overpay for. Even the bribes are overpriced.
The real question is why didn't I leave sooner? There's all these invisible rules and everyone spends all their energy just trying not to break them. Call it what you want, it sucks. I was a top tier surgeon, but I could hardly open a pack of gauze without 10 people signing off first. Now you see why I left. People call Byzantium the jewel of Halcyon, but really, it's just paste. Everything's polished and bureaucracy. Take a close look and you'll see it's deader than anywhere else in the colony. That's what I've been saying. Do you mind? I'm meeting someone. I... oh! Oh! You mean I'm supposed to be meeting you? Yeah, you're looking to make contact with Minister... Uh, Magpie, right? I should warn you, it won't be easy. He spends most of his time in his estate, which is heavily guarded. Whoa, I'm not one of your B&E specialists. I just provide intelligence. Some of the guards hang around Billingsley's House of Inebriation between shifts. That place is still open? I used to study there during medical school. Maybe you could do some reconnaissance there. You know, swipe a key while nobody's looking. Just remember, you didn't hear it from me. Afraid not. He almost never leaves his home and his guards never leave him. I've always been fascinated by birds. If you ever research Earth species, there are thousands of them. So colorful and distinct. The other thing about birds, though, is their environmental indicators. Exactly. I started thinking about everything we see around Halcyon, and all the things we don't see. For starters, you rarely come across anyone living in Byzantium who wasn't born here, even though we get ships in all the time. Trust me, anyone with a lick of sense gets out of here as soon as possible. But most people don't. In fact, most people stay exactly where they start. Doesn't that seem strange to you? And then there's the way nothing gets fixed. There used to be a suggestion box around here. People would drop ideas in. Nothing ever came of them, of course. Sure, that part is. That's why they install shredders in those boxes, after all. But one day, the shredder broke. No one came to fix it. And since it wasn't working, we didn't have anywhere to file our complaints. So you can imagine how messy things got. At first, management put up an out-of-order sign. But that just seemed to worry people. Like they were advertising something wasn't working. Why would the Golden City need suggestions for improvement? It's really so people can feel heard. Everyone's got something to complain about, you know? They eventually took the whole suggestion box sign down so that people didn't have any expectations about it. But they never fixed it, never replaced it. Doesn't that seem odd to you? Except that's not how they go. At least that's not how they're supposed to go in Byzantium. The whole episode made me wonder. If they can't fix something as simple as a suggestion box, what else aren't they fixing? After a while, I got connected with our mutual friend and started using my position here to feed him information when I could. That's it, really.
You may address me however you wish. Vicky, huh? Okay, Vicky it is. You're really gonna let me run with that, aren't you? Why wouldn't I? Can you believe I'm retiring? Lucky me. Exciting happen around here for once. Nothing wrong with stability. It means everything's running like clockwork. Don't you ever want to? Hey, you. Yeah, you. Want to be famous? Kid, you got presence. Natural magnetism. Know what I mean? Tell you what. You're gonna like it a whole lot more once we start talking bits. Listen, uh, you got an agent? Some kind of representation? Hey, don't worry about it. I'm gonna take good care of you. Listen, you got a real special quality, raw energy. I see you in pictures, kid. I'm making a feature, Space Pirates of Moros Prime. It's gonna be a hit, but we still need a star. And I think you got the chops. Well, I have been told I have a face made for an Aetherwave drama. And pipes to match. Maybe we can get you reading some of our ad segments. So what do you say? You ready for the chance of a lifetime? Terrific! We're holding auditions at the studio. Head to Odeon Pictures and take the elevator. You're going all the way to the top, baby! Auntie Cleo's pipe patch. All of the benefits of It really does gleam like spit shine gold. I once treated a lady who got her hand caught in the gears. Maybe it was more worried about her rings than her fingers. CNP pancake mix. Now requires no mixing. Seriously, no mixing. Looking for weapons? You've come to the right place. Every Byzantine needs high-quality armaments, and you won't find better anywhere else. Why? To defend their property, of course. 50-bit says he's got a heart on right now. Byzantium is the best of what Halcyon has to offer. It's up to us to protect it. Marauders, dissidents, especially large sprats, one never knows what threat might arise. Only because we make it so. It is only the fear of the well-armed Byzantine that keeps the rabble at bay. I can honestly say I'm personally terrified at the thought of someone such as yourself wielding a high-powered weapon. Indeed. It's up to us to take our safety into our own capable hands. One can never be too well-armed. Who knows when the hordes may hurl themselves at our gates. I'm afraid I can't come down anymore, my good man. I'd have to request a counter waiver and you know...
Rizzo's mock All right, how does this sound? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to walk into you like that. For all audition, please use the elevator on the left. My cousin's in pictures. That business is piracy and civil. expecting a script, but you're the real deal. Just go in there and do what feels natural. We gave the other actors real weapons to keep things authentic, and cause Josh is paying to see their logo on the big screen. See, I knew you'd get it. Now go in there, find your mark, and show us what you got. Well, well. Here to stop us at last, Captain Steel? You're too late! All of this settlement CNP hungry time food pills, same nutritional value but now with added filler, are ours. With their patented stomach stuffing effects and baseline vitamin content, we will be nigh unstoppable. They... they are? What an unexpected twist! You may have fooled me for now, but not for long! Can I shoot someone? Wait, are we the good guys or the bad guys? Doesn't matter, I want to shoot someone. Do you remember the last time we faced each other? The Battle of Axajax, staring one another down across the void of space while flaming debris fell like rain around us. I didn't write this, just go with it. I had you surrounded and outgunned, but you overcame my superior numbers with tactical thinking and a Hammersmith limited edition grenade launcher. I've been waiting for five years now and at last my day for vengeance has come. I, oh, I just got chills. But still, you'll not stop me now. I have this whole port wired with some micro energon transistors. Once we're away, I'll activate the gamma particulate field and the quantiponic chain reaction will turn this whole place into vaporized plasma. And I spent three hours learning how to pronounce them. I hope you've paid your burial fees and signed your personal death and dismemberment waivers because this is the end for you. Line. Never mind, I think that's seen. To the break room, everyone. I need my Moab fizzy tea. Cut, cut. That was fantastic. With actors like you, who needs writers? Take five. There's my star. Walk and talk with me. That was brilliant stuff. Do you write your own material? Hey, time is bits, right? I'm gonna have to fire the writing staff. What do those anemic fuckwits know about dialogue anyway? I'm thinking a whole new script. More pirates, bigger explosions. You flicking a stogie slim into a barrel of gasoline. Marketing says that kind of action sells tickets. Here. This is for your work today. I'll be in touch once we get that script.
Rizzo's Purple Berry Bunch, a soft, sour candy shell around. Oh, Sweet how many times have you candy. seen Terror? For a monarch. Terror on Monarch loses its appeal. Citizens, today marks a monumentous occasion in the course of Halcyon history. Sure, they look fancy, but inside they're just marble and existential emptiness. There's my parents' place. Smell that? Industrial grade cleaning solvent. Marilyn, is that you? Laws, we certainly didn't expect to see you like this. And I didn't expect you to renew your marriage contract. But we're all full of surprises today, aren't we? Speaking of surprises, you should meet my new friend. We've been running around the system for a while now, stirring up all sorts of trouble. There you go again, Captain. Always menacing, polite society. Anyway, you're probably wondering where I've been all this time. Not <clears throat> exactly. The last few years have been a bloody haze. You wouldn't believe the messes we've gotten ourselves into. Right? Marilyn, this really isn't the best time. Uh, perhaps you should go. I mean, we had other business in Byzantium, so it's not like we went out of our way. But you can't just kick us out. We'll stay as long as we like. And while we're at it, we'll drink your expensive hooch, wear our outside shoes all over your nice floors. She's right. Since when can you afford authentic Terran marble? That's what we've been trying to tell you, dear, but you must understand, we hadn't heard from you in ages. We thought you were dead. I'm not dead. I just never wanted to talk to you again. I'm afraid the distinction was lost on us, darling. We only did what any grieving parents in our position would do. We collected on your life insurance policy. And the payouts have been rather uh, substantial. You what? Of course. And we shall always harbor that joyful secret deep within our hearts and you'll report it to the insurance company right it's not that simple for one thing we'd have to cut back on so many necessities the neighbors would be sure to notice That's the other problem. We had to explain your disappearance somehow. We couldn't very well tell people you'd you'd run off to become a a miscreant, could we? Shh! Someone could hear you. We concocted a story about Celeste Jolly Girl designing a pair of twelve-inch heels for you. One of a kind, naturally. That led to your tragic death when you tripped and broke your neck. It was quite the story. People were talking about it for weeks. Not a 
until I get some answers. Couldn't you have at least made up a better story? Something with pirates or raptodons? And what are you going to do now that we're here? Yes, um, about that. We were just about to ask you to uh, leave. Quietly, if you don't mind. Hmm. She hasn't changed a bit, I see. That's it? You just want us to disappear now? Marilyn, please. Don't cause a scene. Let's just get out of here, Captain. Fine. I'm gone. Forever this time. Let's talk outside. A word, Captain? Can you believe those two? We'd hardly been there a minute, and they turned us out like yesterday's garbage. I wanted them to get upset. I just thought it would play out differently. They'd both be sitting there, watching one of their vapid Aetherwave dramas, and then we'd walk in. Mother would drop her mock apple cider and the glass would shatter all over their overpriced marble. Father would tear off his glasses and blink open-mouthed. I know. I just didn't want to get booted out of the house I grew up in like that. It's embarrassing, you know. And I've got a reputation to maintain. Hey, the last thing I want to do is sit around thinking about all this. I want to take action. I want to... Wait a second. What if I could get that money? I could open a new account, designate that account holder as a sole beneficiary. All the payouts would go to me. I'll make money without doing a thing. And I'll get to cut them off. My policy is with the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. They have an office in Byzantium. Maybe you could use some of your people skills to help me set up a dummy beneficiary account. If that doesn't work, I'm sure we can find one of their terminals and do it ourselves. Something on your mind? I'm a surgeon by training and a pirate by inclination. Not much else to know, Captain. I like long walks on the promenade and the smell of Spacer's Corona. I make a mean zero-G cocktail and I've got a meaner right hook. Sure do. Some of it was even legal. There's a lot of business that goes through the Groundbreaker. Some of it's board-authorized freight hauling, and some of it's not. I've done all types of work with all kinds of crews. If there's one thing you ought to know about me, it's that I won't tell you your business. Your ship, your way. Glad to hear it. It's worked for me this long. No complaints here. I 
guess we're going to Fallbrook. A reminder to all crew members. I think I'll initiate an unscheduled rest cycle. I see you're still in one piece. However, you never know when that could change. Consider our accidentally torn into tiny fragments coverage. Note that all of your fragments must be recovered and must be smaller than a standard bit cartridge for the payouts to kick in. I remember that one. That's the young socialite who broke her neck, right? Of course, no one remembers me for the marauders I've killed or the bits I've stolen. Typical. That claim was airtight. Our best investigators couldn't find an exclusion for that one. You can't, of course. Only Miss Fenhel can assign her beneficiaries. And she's dead. If we let every friend, relative, and acquaintance change a policy like that, people would do it all the time. Imagine the paperwork. Oh, you mean hypothetically? Well, hypothetically, you'd access the terminal in the back room that contains data on all our policies. And you'd, theoretically, add the beneficiary of your choice. But you wouldn't actually do that, of course. That would be fraud. Please, my policy only covers paper cuts and wrist strain. Very well, I'll do it. But then you've got to go. Confrontations like this will raise my premiums. I'll need the name of the new beneficiary. Um, Ellie Fenhill? If you say so. The payouts will flow exclusively into the new account at the start of the month. I hope Ms. Fenhill enjoys her newfound prosperity. did it. Give these payouts a few years and I'll be rolling in it. Hey, you did the real work. All I had to do was not be dead. I'm just glad my folks aren't going to live off that awful story they made up. Maybe now they'll have to go back to real jobs. Come on, I thought we were celebrating. <laughs> you want me to think about the future? If only you could have been my chief surgeon back in the day. Anyway, enough of that. You did a job for me, so here's your fee. Don't make it weird. Even you've got to be in it for the money now and then. Why else would you go through all this trouble? You sure? Because my kind of friends will pick your pocket clean while they're getting hammered with you. Yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to get all mushy or anything. Still, maybe you've got a point. Maybe it's good to watch someone's back now and then so that one day, they watch yours. So, you just keep the money. One of us has to look out for your interests. It's 
nothing personal. It's just the closest thing I've got to a code. Anyway, enough of the touchy feelies, huh? Stand back, you. I'm part of Minister Clark's personal detail, and that means you gotta keep five feet back at all times. Of course not. <laughs> but I'm not on the job right now. The others took me out to celebrate on account of me just getting hired and all. <laughs> Oh, um, he's, uh, medium height with, like, medium colored hair and, like, a kind of a medium face. Just like in his posters. Everyone tells me he's very private, okay? Besides, I just started. He's basically the most important person in the colony, which makes me the most important guard in the colony. <laughs> yeah. That means I got a key to the minister's estate, my own personal UDL-issued shotgun. <laughs> they don't give those out to just anyone. Yep, I've nearly made it to the top, my friend. I'm just two promotions away from on-the-job bathroom breaks. That's a great idea! I'll have a Spectrum Vodka. Please allow me to improve your drinking experience with fine cocktails and pre-approved banter. Request confirmed. Venter protocol activated. Welcome, attractive patron, to Billingsley's House of Inebriation. Studies have shown that drinking in the vicinity of extremely valuable objects, such as this auto-mechanical bartender, can enhance the quality of your intoxication. Hey, you look familiar. Have we met before? Here's to me! <laughs> hey, you are really great. Have I told you that? We should be friends. <laughs> wow, listen to me. I'm soaked. <laughs> I should probably slow down before I'm face down on the tile somewhere. <laughs> Who am I kidding? I could, I could have another. You got another? It's not every day you get your dream job, right? Wow! You've got, like, this crazy energy. Has anyone ever told you that? You're like a, like a manosaur. You got a manosaur energy. Oh, laws. I gotta stop. I'm seeing at least two of you. I really shouldn't. I'll have the worst hangover tomorrow if I don't stop. Nonsense. You've got another in you. Doctor's orders. Guess I can't argue with that. Yeah. Was that one supposed to taste like purple berry crunch? Or am I just tasting breakfast? I don't feel so good. I think I'm gonna be sick. I just need to sit down.
Have you tried our new cocktail sponsored by Rizzo's? One part purple spectrum vodka, one part artificial tomato-like substitute juice. We call it a Blue Bloody Mary. Oh, by all means, ask away. I don't believe in work. Work is for auto mechanicals and lower classes. I don't mean to sound cruel. There's nothing wrong with working. It's just so unnecessary. Why bother? We all have our roles in society. I like to think of myself as an entrepreneur. This drinking establishment is my investment. Rizzo's Spectrum Vodka is about to release its newest color, ultraviolet, completely invisible to the naked eye. You're always going on about destiny. What did your mother do? She was a simple laborer. And your father? The same. And you ended up a preacher how? Delusion. I could not accept a life that I felt was beneath me, so I convinced myself that becoming a vicar would solve all my problems. <laughs> In a strange way, it did. This property is off limits. Solicitors, loiterers, and uninvited visitors will be fined to the fullest extent of company policy. This ultimatum brought to you by Universal Defense Logistics. Well, that's funny. The Minister isn't expecting visitors, and you don't much look like one of those couriers from HPS. Minister Clark's a private man, and you're asking too many questions. Legally allotted break. Really, I'm supposed to be here. Oh, um, what are you doing here? Nothing. Nothing. Why? Uh, does it does it look like I'm up to something? Laws, I knew it. Uh, you got me. I'm caught, aren't I? I work in the lab at the Ministry of Accuracy and Morale. Some of my sprats went missing, but it's not my fault, okay? Maybe I let them out more often than regulations allow, but they need to stretch their little legs. And so what if I occasionally forgot to latch their cage? Everyone gets a little distracted now and then. They escaped, and before I could coax them back, they'd made their way to the maintenance tunnels. Even if I did dare go down there, they're among all the common sewer sprats and exterminator mechanicals. Really? In that case, take this collection crate. Six of my little ones are down there, but don't worry, you can easily tell them apart from common sewer sprats. They have intelligent eyes, an agreeable yet reserved demeanor, and a fondness for hiding. Also, they're white rather than green. Please, do take care, and do mind the exterminator mechanicals, if the worst should happen to my little darlings, well, I still want their bodies. For science, of course. Well, to maintain things, of course. Like big, humming machine things with gears. And pipes. Water pipes. Air pipes. All sorts of pipes. That's why they connect the city from the Acropolis district to here. Everyone knows sewer sprats carry diseases. And the exterminator mechanicals have been known to fire on larger targets. Why they do that when they're only supposed to attack sprats, I've no idea. But there are rumors. Some people say there are strange things in those tunnels. Assassins. A room full of murderous auto mechanicals. Monsters hungry for human flesh. 
a hidden bureaucratic purgatory where things and people are lost forever. Not that I place any stock in silly rumors, of course. To deal with the sewer sprats, of course. They're quite the nuisance. Therefore, my, um, research. Oh, very well. It's true. I do run studies on them at the lab, but I also have a special connection with them. See, I'm an enormous fan of all my colonists. The early seasons, before the plot lines got tacky. You must have seen the classic episodes. Well, I name all my sprats after my favorite characters. That way, their stories can live on in rodent form. So you see, it's imperative that I get them all back. Not just names, they all have backstories too. There's Lord Reginald Kim III, Lady Philippa Farnsworth, Vonda Von Vermington, Haroon Greenlee, Iskander Emmanuel Sanchez, and Evelyn Ensley Okoye. Something else? I still am. After all, I'm a person of very little influence and only middling prospects. No one does favors for free. But I must say, I'm far too distressed to think critically about your suspiciously kind offer. You're a deft hand with a magpick. I'm afraid I can't help you at the moment. Have a prosperous day. Well, you're getting an early start on the day's parcels, aren't you? Welcome to Halcyon Parcel Service. Deliveries guaranteed within standard margins of accuracy. Halcyon Parcel Service is the most dependable parcel delivery service in the colony. You might even say we're part and parcel of Halcyon's commercial enterprise. That's just a little parcel joke. Nope. Just parcels. We don't deal in packages. It's very technical. Halcyon Parcel Service strictly adheres to the standards and definitions of packaging as outlined by the Executive Ministry of Accuracy and Morale. We can ship all the parcels you want. But if I start shipping packages, I could get into some real trouble. Handcuffs and hard labor trouble. 